let's begin so what's a quadrilateral guys so we'll just do a quick uh, definition part and then we'll move on to problem solving as quickly as possible so let me start with a quick definition and few properties around quadrilateral so quadri quadrilaterals okay so the name is very you know um self explanatory so hence quad quad means four and laterals means sides so hence we say any closed geometric figure with four sides and we name it a b c d this is called a quadrilateral or quadriangle quadriangle right both both names are there now um so if you see uh there are four sides so let me just write four sides are there or four laterals are there four edges are there whichever name four vertices are there a b and c and d and uh, four angles are there okay and there are there are two things two diagonals are also there so these are two diagonals opposite vertices joined together in case of quadrilateral diagonals right so these two diagonals are there moreover you know that in a quadrilateral we have uh, four sets of four sets of adjacent sides as well as four sets of adjacent angles and uh, you can see ab bc is one set then bc cd is another one cd ad another one and ad ab these are four sets of adjacent sides similarly angle a and angle b they are pair of adjacent angles angle b angle c angle c angle d and angle d and angle a these are four pairs of four pairs of adjacent angles isn't it this is the information about a quadrilateral apart from that there are two opposite sides what are two opposite sides here clearly it is ab and cd and the other one ad and bc there are two pairs of opposite sides similarly two pairs of opposite angles and that is angle a and angle c and angle b and angle d these are you know the vital information about the quadrilateral why am i discussing all of that because later on you are now going to you know study the properties of a quadrilateral now you ask me why do we study quadrilateral in the first place now you know uh, sense of geometry is very very important let's say in the field of engineering then those who want to let's say take up architecture architecture and therefore or later on let's say design right you want to design any particular you know um product or let's say you want to design a building or you are into engineering so you must be very very thorough with the knowledge of geometry so hence and quadrilateral being one of the integral part of geometry taught or you know we must learn okay next first property of a triangle which is very very vital you all of you know already and that is angle sum property of angle sum property property of a quadrilateral okay so this you can guess already we had an angle sum property of a triangle and that was sum of uh, the three angles in a triangle is equal to 180 here what we are going to do we are going to repeat the same process and here is let's say the a b c and d so this is the quadrilateral and we are saying angle a plus angle b plus angle c plus angle d is 360 degrees it is very very easy to prove and we will use something which we have already learned in the previous sessions or classes and that is we will be using angle sum property angle sum property of a triangle right how to do that construction join any of the two diagonals let's say i am joining db so now name them let's say this is angle 1 this is angle 2 this is angle 3 this one being 4 5 and 6 so hence what can i say in triangle adb angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 6 is 180 degrees why angle sum property for triangle 
Similarly, angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 is again 180 degrees and this is in triangle DCD. Okay, now what? Name this as equation 1, name this as equation 2 and simply add both of them. So 1 plus 2. LHS plus LHS, RHS plus RHS, so hence you get angle 1. Plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 is 180 plus 180 on the right hand side is 360 degrees. Fair enough. So hence now you club 2 and 3. What do you see? 2 and 3 and 5 and 6. The proof is kind of done. So hence angle 1 is angle A. Angle 2 plus angle 3. If you can see this is angle 2 plus angle 3. So it's angle D. Angle D. And angle 4 is nothing but angle C. And 5 and 6 put together here is angle B. Correct. So 360 degrees, you can rearrange and you have just got the desired result. Okay, so sum of the four sides, oh sorry, four angles of a quadrilateral. 360, time to solve problems now. So let's solve problems. Okay, so first problem set. Mm -hmm. So r and r people, you would have done it in the morning, but never mind, you can do it again. So let's start. Yep. So start guys. You can post your answers in the chat. So first question is angle of a quadrilateral are respectively in 198, 92. Find the fourth angle quick. Do it. Yash, calculation error, dude. Don't do calculation mistake. Okay, very fairly simple question. All of you would have done it by now. Now, second question. In a quadrilateral ABCD, the angle ABC and D are in the ratio one is to two is to three is to four. Find the measures of each angle of the quadrilateral. Okay, first answer is 70. First answer is 70. Why? We will be using angle sum property of the triangle. Oh, sorry, of the um, quadrilateral. So first angle, I think I don't, don't need to solve the first one for you. But anyways, uh, let me just share the, yeah, the whiteboard with this so that I can finally solve it as well. Okay, so here is the next question. Yep. I hope you're able to see it. Yeah, keep solving. If you are able to solve one, go to the next one. Yeah, so the first one is, first one is, yes. So the first one, first question. So it is given the angles are 100, then uh, 100 degrees and uh, you have 98 degrees and third is 92 degrees. And let's say the fourth one was X. Okay, so how to solve this? So I'll, I'll tell you in, in the exam, if it happens, you should start like this. So this is just the information. So you should, you should, you should start like this. Let the fourth angle be X. Okay, let the fourth angle be X now by angle sum property property of a quadrilateral a quadrilateral we get what do we get 100 degrees plus 98 degrees plus 92 degrees plus x is equal to 360 degrees okay so hence what will you write you will write 100 plus 98 plus 92 is uh, 192 90 so 290 degrees plus x is equal to 360 degrees so x is equal to 360 degrees minus 290 degrees which is equal to 70 degrees this is the answer so the fourth angle is yes very good yep let's solve question number two i hope all of you understood the first one this is it's no brainer very easy one so they will give you some certain such it could be you know asked for not more than one mark in your exam okay next question next question was a quadrilateral a b c d angle a b c and d are in the ratio one is to two is to three is to four find the measure of each angle of the quadrilateral okay so in such cases whenever the ratios are given what to do you have to do uh, let let the angles of let the angles let the angles of the quadrilateral or the given quadrilateral lateral be what? 
uh, x, then 2x, then 3x, and 4x. So whatever was the ratio, if you see, x, 2x, 3x, 4x, all are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. Okay, now what? Therefore, by angle sum property of a quadrilateral, quadrilateral, we get what? x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x is equal to 360 degrees. So that means 10x, so if you see x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x is 10x, so 10x is 360 degrees. So what is x guys? Simply 360 degrees by 10 equal to 36 degrees. Okay, so x is 36 then 2x, the second angle will be equal to 2 into 36 degrees, which is equal to 72 degrees. 3x is 3 into 36 degrees. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, correct. 36 degrees is equal to 108. And 4x is equal to 4 into 36 is equal to 144 degree. And to check, if you add all of them, you'll get 360 degrees. Okay, this is question number two. All clear? Anyone has any doubt? Please, you can talk to me to chat. Okay, next. Yep. So now let's say this question would have come in uh, MCQ, then you know, you don't get this much time to you know, write all the steps. So hence, in such cases, what will you do? You simply add the ratios. What is this? One plus two plus three plus four. So 10. Yeah. So divide the total by 10. So 36. So automatically the angles are 36 times one, 36 times two, 36 times three, and 36 times four. Simple. So these questions could be good candidates for MCQ questions. Okay. Now, third one. Third one says, sides B and DC of a quadrilateral ABCD are produced as shown. Prove that A plus B is equal to X plus Y. And meanwhile, those who are solving question number five, I, there is a correction in question number five and it, it says prove that. So I'm, I'm, yeah. So the question number five, just a correction, question number five I'm writing here. So the correction is in the question number five, you have to prove that, prove that angle P plus angle Q is equal to half angle ABC plus angle ADC. Half angle ABC plus angle ADC. You have to prove this. Okay. So it was missing in the sheet. Never mind. So let's go back to question number three. It says there is a quadrilateral. So this is the quadrilateral. I'm drawing the figure. Uh, so this is the quadrilateral. Okay. This is a quadrilateral. Okay. So now what is given? It's given these are the points A, B, C, and D. And it's given that uh, it's, uh, you know, D, DC is produced. So, okay. And BA is also produced. You have to prove that A plus B. So this angle happens to be B. This happens to be A. And join them. This hole happens to be Y. And this whole happens to be X. So you have to prove what? You have to prove that A plus B is equal to X plus Y. In such questions, how do we start? Sir, what is the message by Neha from Neha? What is it? Could you please scroll down to the fifth question? I can't see the entire figure. Okay. So here is the fifth question, guys. I hope now it fits in. Yeah. Now, in this, how to approach such questions? You can start from C. They are asking about, if you see, A plus B are angles and they are asking about the sum of angles. So whenever angles are being added upon, you must have this thing in, your, in the back of your mind that it has got something to do with angle sum properties, whether it is triangle, angle, uh, rectangle, quadrilateral, whatever, right? So A plus B, and you, if you see, A and B happens to be exterior angles to these to this figure, right? And if you consider only the triangle, this shaded triangle, right? So this triangle, for this triangle, B is the exterior, exterior angle. So can I write, and let me, some, let me put some other names as well. So for example, let me put this angle as one, and let's say this angle be two, let's say this angle is three, and let's say this angle is four. So can I say that angle B, or let's say, not angle B, B is equal to angle one plus angle three. 
by what theorem it is exterior angle theorem for a triangle exterior angle theorem so i'm i'm just writing in abbreviation i'm not writing in full in exam you should write in full so b is angle 1 plus 3 similarly a is equal to angle 2 plus angle 4 now always keep in mind you want a plus b so hence it is always advisable now to add these two so what will you get you will get a plus b is equal to angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 in the rhs now yeah someone is saying something just a minute what is it uh okay someone is giving the solution never mind so a plus b is this so what do we get we get angle 1 plus angle 2 is nothing but if you see angle 1 plus angle 2 is y and angle 3 plus angle 4 is x so hence prove this was again a one liner sum so no brain and in this again a plus b is equal to x plus y so the third question is solved yep go to question number 4 here is where the complication starts okay i think how many of you could solve question number 4 question number 4 solved yeah good so most of you would have done it never mind aditi raised hand aditi yes aditi you can write here aditi yeah so basically okay fair enough no problem no problem you can mention here four and five done four and five done good no problem so let us you know i the the point is we need to learn how to express your you know most of your answer scripts which i have seen there were lots of problems in communication guys even if you uh, know the solution you were you were not able to reproduce it on the piece of paper and there were lots of mistakes regarding that so hence use these sessions to understand how to present your answers as well now let's say question number 4 what does it say it says yeah question number 4 question number 4 says in a quadrilateral abcd so let me draw a neat quadrilateral so quadrilateral i am drawing abcd always try to draw asymmetric quadrilateral to avoid confusion because many a times you draw symmetric quadrilateral symmetric figures and what happens is your mind gets confused so don't draw you know square let's say if there is a if there's a quadrilateral question many people start with drawing squares so hence what happens is they you know your mind gets confused when you are solving a complex question so draw you know asymmetric figures now uh, now so this is a b c and d okay now they're saying uh ao and bo are are bisectors of a and b so let's say this is ao ao and this is bo sorry yeah try to make the diagram as neat as possible i'll give you a mantra here and i always keep on saying in my classes the more you make the life of the examiner easy easier he she will make your life okay always remember think about let's say you have to correct anyone's paper how would you expect them to be so there is where maximum you know so presentation does really matter anyways so this is just a gam i am cropping this up and shifting it somewhere else anyways now come back to the question question says um what does the question say question says that ao ao is a bisector of angle a and bo is bisector of angle b so clearly do not hesitate to write this as x and x y and y okay so you you should present like this what you should write given i know many of you despise this but then guys you know uh, if you are not very very prepared for methodical approach of question solving later on in your mcq based test also you will struggle so hence this is very very important this is just from experience i'm trying i'm trying to tell you so given what is given given is always let your mind know and let the mind take full control of the entire problem so hence i'm saying given what is given ao and bo are bisectors there is no problem in writing write as much as possible ao and bo are bisectors of 
एंगल ए एंड एंगल बी रेस्पेक्टिवली ओके द मोर यू राइट द मोर क्लैरिटी योर माइंड गेट्स एंड लेसर द नंबर ऑफ केयरलेस मिस्टेक्स नाउ टू प्रूव वट इज टू प्रूव यू हैव टू प्रूव दैट एंगल ए ओ बी एंगल ए ओ बी इज इक्वल टू हाफ एंगल सी प्लस एंगल डी ओके many a times we also adopt a uh, check what is the check so we can we can check whether the given problem is really correct or not how do we check so you can take some special cases for example let this abcd be square now let's say now let me show you how to you know keep this checks in mind so let's say let's say this was the case let me draw this let's say abcd is a If it is true for one quadrilateral, it will be true for any quadrilateral, isn't it? Hello, are you able to see hear me properly, Aditya? Hello, guys, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Cool. So now, so what I'm trying to say is, see how to check. Okay, check how to check such kind of problems. Yes, so let's say if it is if it is true for one quadrilateral, it should be true for any quadrilateral, right? So let me take that square, and you know, squares are Right angle. So all the all the angles are right angles. So hence, if the bisector would be there, how much will be this angle? Forty five degrees. And how much will be this angle? Forty five degrees. So hence, how much will this this angle be? Ninety degrees. So let's check whether this fits in into into our problem. So angle A O B. So this was A. This is B, and this is O. So angle A O B is how much? Angle A O B in this case is ninety degrees. And let's check what is half of C plus D. Now C. This is C, and this is D. This is also ninety. Is also ninety. So half of C plus D again is ninety. So hence it works. It works for square. That means that means the problem is kind of correct. You know, might might not be. So hence we can approach and then we can generalize. Now what to prove this? So how to prove? So let's jot down the proof. Right again. The what should come in your mind? Many a times this question is being asked to me. How do you go about any problem? How do you think whether this is a you know correct step or what should be the first step many people struggle in the first step itself now there is no direct answer to that but yes over a period of time if you are conscious about problem solving you can get those trends and traits you know as you solve more and more for example here again if you see there are some of angles given okay some is being talked about so hence the moment there is a sum of angle and there is a geometric figure automatically the mind goes to some property of any quadrilateral or any polygon for that matter is it so hence that we will we could definitely try that and uh, if let's say that doesn't work then we'll have to also um, you know go to some other method so we this is what you know with experience again now angle aob is half angle c plus d so what is angle aob by the way where is angle aob let's locate it angle aob is here now clearly in terms of i can express aob in terms of x and y this question is automatically leading me to do that why no we can't prove it uh, shreyas because you know the question being asked here by shreyas is when we did the square method uh, checking thing uh, can we not uh, use that method itself as a, a proof no uh, one specific case cannot be proof for you know all the cases right so it, it just works only for one case so something which works for one case doesn't mean that uh, it will be uh, you know useful or let's say you know you can prove it or it will work for all the cases for example let's say in one one particular test out of 100 you get 80 that doesn't mean you will get 80 always in the next next exam you have to get more than 90 yep or 95 right so hence it cannot be generalized so by one test i cannot generalize whether you are really really smart or dumb or whatever right so hence one specific case cannot be taken to generalize the proof so hence we have to take uh, uh, that that approach in geometry or any such proof so that no one can question our approach and it has to be generalized i hope you understood no 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 uh, uh, the question next is you said that if it works for one question one quadrilateral it will work for others too no i didn't say that i am saying if it is true for all quadrilateral then it will be true definitely for a square as well why because square is a special as it is a special type of a quadrilateral do you understand so hence that's the thing so hence if it is 
true for any given quadrilateral it must be true for square as well but the vice versa is not true that means if if it is true for square it need not be true for all the quadrilaterals so hence that's the you know relationship please understand if it is true for a quadrilateral it will be true for any square for that matter okay not the vice versa now let's see the proof i hope uh, you got it okay great now angle aob is half so how do i express this in terms of x and y so clearly if you remember angle aob can be written as 180 degrees minus x and minus y why this is a direct fault for, you know uh, uh result of let's say angle sum property of a angle sum property of a triangle of a triangle isn't it so angle sum property of a triangle this is a direct fall out of that so hence so wait a minute i'll just make some space here yes now what what's next so you can again write this as 180 degrees minus x plus y okay where again you can write this as can you not write x as a by 2 so hence i am writing angle a by 2 plus angle b by 2 isn't it so what is this 180 degrees minus half of angle a plus angle b okay now i need c and d so hence i have to find out i have to somehow replace a b by c and d so how do i do it i know one more relationship that is angle a plus angle b plus angle c plus angle d is 360 degrees so my dear friends angle a plus angle b will automatically be 360 degrees minus angle b sorry minus angle c minus angle c minus angle d correct and then if i multiply the whole equation by half i will get 180 degrees minus c c plus d by 2 now the problem is solved so now what you can do is you can replace this item here this one here can you see by this item here so hence it becomes angle aob is equal to what is this 180 first so right 180 degrees minus the second thing can be written as 180 degrees minus angle c plus angle d by 2 i just substituted this and hence you got angle c plus angle d by 2 hence proved okay i hope you understood this see more than i know most of you would be knowing how to solve it i'm just trying to say you have to develop a construct of problem solving and and it is you know very you know uh, it's lacking in most of you but when i see your answer scripts and you know the way you approach you have to um, you didn't understand the last three steps once again see so a plus c plus c plus d a plus b plus c plus d is 360 degrees hope you understood this then angle a plus b can be written as 360 degrees minus angle c minus d just take these two on the right hand side here okay then what angle a plus b is this so if i multiply this by half i have to multiply this whole by half and if you open the brackets what you what will you get you'll get 180 degrees minus this yep okay now did you all understand now so hence now what i i will come back to aob so aob was what this one 180 degrees minus half angle a plus b so and minus half angle a plus b was equal to 180 minus this so i simply replaced this one this item here i replaced this one by this one this one yep and hence if you replace it you will get the desired so 180 minus 180 gets cancelled and this minus and this minus one minus gets multiplied becomes plus 1 and you get c plus d by 2 now did you understand all of you is that fine clear arya we are just trying to understand the methodology most of you are grossly missing on the methods to adopt and how to present your answers okay so hence please pay attention even if you know how to solve it but i know when you reproduce in the paper 180 minus 180 becomes 360 that's what the kind of mistakes you have done in your last midterm exams so please be attentive here okay now before we proceed further 
there could be multiple methodologies yash it's just a way of expressing it properly that's it if you if you know there is one way works better than the other please go about it but then no 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 please suggest don't worry you know you are very very welcome to suggest anything i am just trying to hint upon is one thing which is you know which i observed in your all your papers is the way you present your answers is little you know shaky you know the, the approach is not that correct so hence that has to be taken care of okay in in bit of all this uh, i'll give you one more generic uh, theorem and that theorem is angle sum property of any any polygon angle sum this is an additional information for you property angle sum property of any polygon you must be knowing few of you angle sum property of any polygon okay so what is it if you have if you have a polygon a polygon a polygon with n sides with n sides for example n is equal to 3 in case of triangle i i'll just give you who who's who's eminem you know i know i need to know your name please tell me your name don't have some random names in my class i need to know each one of you please tell me your name yeah so uh, a polygon with n sides so angle sum angle sum property property angle sum property of a polygon polygon of n sides is nothing but sum of sum of all angles of the polygon 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 with n sides n sides is equal to how much is it anyone knows n minus 2 times 180 degrees okay please remember again i'm writing n minus 2 times 180 degrees this is what the generalization of this particular theorem is yep you can use it for any purpose you want now you can check when n is equal to 3 what is a triangle right three sides triangle so you see when n equals to 3 n minus 2 into 180 is 180 right when n is equal to 4 what will happen 4 minus 2 into 180 is equal to 360 degrees so this is for triangle this is for quadrilateral this is for quadrilateral so let's say you have a pentagon 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 will have five sides n equals to 5 right so hence it will be 5 minus 2 into 180 degrees is equal to 540 degrees okay so this is how it goes so hence you can you can now predict for hexagon for hexagon angle sum property hexagon means n equals to 6 so it will be nothing but 6 minus 2 times 180 degrees which is nothing but 720 degrees okay now can you tell me guys what will be the angle sum property or the sum of angles of a polygon with 12 sides 12 sides polygon Do decagon. One thousand eight hundred. Yes. Oh, one thousand nine eighty. Nine eighty. Why? One eight double zero. One eight double zero. Awesome, guys. You guys. Eighty nine hundred. One eight double zero. So twelve minus two times one eighty degrees. Yeah. Five seven one eight. One eight. One thousand eight hundred zero degrees. Right. Thousand eight hundred degrees. Very good. Thanks a lot. Do decagon. Okay. A polygon with. you know all these things you will learn in organic chemistry later on the angles of a polygon becomes very very important later on okay so please keep these things in your mind okay now sir what about 360 divided by n what is 360 divided by n what is it come again exterior angle what is this no i i uh, come again what is what are you talking about sir what about 360 divided by n that formula 360 divided by n formula what is it Exterior angle. Exterior angle. Yeah. Who's this? So Shadli. Shadli. Yes, Shadli. What is what? What? Are, uh, who's the Who's the person who's asking the question? I didn't recognize you. Sir, I'm Harshad. Then, sir, Nafil. Oh, hi. Yes, sir. So, tell me, what is this? Yeah, uh, uh, Shadli. You're taking, taught, uh, saying something about this. Um. So, three sixty by n is for exterior angle. State the sum. Sorry, state the theorem. 
So, if n is the number of sides in a regular polygon, then each angle is gonna measure three sixty um three sixty by n degrees. That is, that is the uh, that's not external external angle, no. Oh, you are ex each 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 external angle is going to be like that. That's what you're saying for a regular yeah. polygon. Okay, did you understand Harsh? Harsh, right? Yes, sir. I understood. Yeah. So regular polygon, my mind you guys, I'm not talking about regular polygons here. What is an eleven-sided polygon called? Don't, if I don't know, see, best way is to go to Google and you learn how to study simultaneously. Keep everything <laughs> open, so you don't need to know everything. So let's say undecagon is my prediction. Let's see, eleven-sided polygon, eleven-sided. Polygon, yeah, name. So someone has asked also. You see, dual. Uh, what is it? Um, Hindekagan. Okay, the person who asked this question, Aditya, Hindekagan. I don't know how do how do you pronounce it, but yes, keep Google friendly. You know, with you, keep it with you all the all the time. Okay, if possible. Yeah. Now, uh, Dodekagan is for twelve. Coming back to our what? Where did it go? Yes. So now the next question. Okay, this that's what I mentioned in the very beginning in the question number five. Something was missing. It's not given what is to be proved. So don't worry. I'll give you. I'll give you enough things to prove now. Okay. So question number five, guys. How many of you could solve this? To prove. To prove in this question is angle P plus angle Q is Half angle ABC plus angle ADC. This is what is to be proven. Yep. All of you could do this question. Anyone who could do it? Yes, no, don't know, maybe. Come on, guys, tell. Could you do this question? How many could do this? Oh, I did it. Yeah, who, who's I? Yep. Okay, great. Chalo. So let me tell you, great, great, great. Let me tell you how to approach such kind of problems. So hence again, you need to understand the approach more than the real, you know, solution. Solution, you guys, I know you guys are pretty smart. You will be able to do it. But approach as well as presentation is something which is very, very crucial. Now the question is, uh, bisectors of angle A and D quadrilateral ABCD. Now, many of you, the first mistake you will do is ABCD appears to be a parallelogram, isn't it? In the figure, it appears to be a parallelogram. And almost, you know, a good chunk of people would start the problem solution by considering or assuming that ABCD is a parallelogram. And hence, that is first stage of, you know, mistake, right? So hence, do not get confused or let's say guided by whatever the figure is given please read the question thoroughly at least twice so it says in figure bisectors of angle b and angle d of quadrilateral abcd so hence what i used to do during my time was i would skew the image to that extent that i don't need to follow whatever is there so you know unfortunately here it is not getting done now it's it's fine again this is also so yeah, I just try to distort the, you know, I try to generalize uh, the some, um, you know, by drawing this kind of a diagram. Now, now name it according to what the diagram is A, B, C, D. And now it says angle B and angle D. So angle D bisector is going here and you produce it. So this point is Q and angle B bisector is coming here and you produce it. Wow. The, the software is intelligent enough to predict good. So hence this is Q and this is P. Now you have to prove, prove what? Angle P plus Q. So this angle plus this angle is equal to, is equal to half of ABC and ADC. Again, P and Q. Okay. So how to solve? Again, P and Q sum and, uh, you know, normally you're seeing that we are trying to solve similar type of problem. So hence somewhere the angle sum property must be there, but uh, you know, P 
DQB is a quadrilateral. So either you can use the angle sum property of a quadrilateral itself, or you can try and use angle sum property of a triangle. There could be two approaches here, right? So let me say where all is angle P. So clearly, so given and all, so you have to start with this given. What is given? BP and DQ are bisectors, bisectors of angle B and angle D respectively. This, the question itself will help you. But sparing 10 seconds to write such given statements will help you. Okay. So, right. And AB, AB and CD are produced produced to Q and P respectively. So this is, this is respectively and always try to number the given items. Why? Because the more you number the information, the more you get a clarity. Okay. So those are the two facts which are given now to prove to prove what is to be proved. So angle P plus angle Q is nothing but what is it? Half of half of angle ABC, ABC and ADC. This is what is to be proven. Okay, great. Now what? So now once I have taken down the question, now I'll use the entire space. Now clear how to go about it. Now, if you see, this is one triangle guys. So I will use this information. P is lying in one, this thing. And then let's use uh, the information which is given. BP and DQ are bisectors. That means if I coin it as X, this will be X. And if this is Y, this will be Y. Isn't it? Now, let's find the proof out. So how to go about it. Let's try to work on angle P first. So if you see angle P plus angle C plus X in this triangle, this triangle, angle P plus C plus X, what is it? It is nothing but it is equal to 180 degrees, 180 degrees. Okay. Is it fine? Now angle P plus angle C. So hence, if you see the left hand side comprises of P. So hence I am getting the P here. P thing is here. So keep that in mind. P is here. Now let's talk about Q, right? Let's talk about Q. Q, angle Q. If you see, where is angle Q here? So this falls in this triangle. Correct. So angle Q plus angle A plus Y is 180 degrees again. And what is the basis? Angle sum property. Okay. Now what? So I want to get angle P plus angle Q. So either you can represent P in form of all other angles and Q in, in terms of all and all other angles and add, or you can add these two equations right away. So for making your life easier, I'm expressing it like this angle P is equal to 180 degrees minus angle C. And what can I say about X? X is half of B, isn't it? So I can write this as 180 degrees minus angle C minus angle B by two. I hope it's clear to all. Next is angle Q is equal to 180 degrees minus angle A and Y can be written as angle D by two. See angle here angle X is B by two and Y is D by two, isn't it? Okay. Now what I am naming this as one and naming this as two and add one and two, one and two. So see, can you not see that I get the LHS? I get the LHS, right? LHS is sorted. I just need to arrive at the given RHS. So let's see. So if you add, what will you get? 180 degrees minus angle C minus angle B by two and plus 180 degrees minus angle A minus angle D by two. Okay, which is equal to 360 degrees. 180 plus 180 is 360 degrees minus angle A plus angle C within brackets. I'm clubbing them together. And this is nothing but angle 
angle B plus angle D by two. Clubbing minus sign together. Now you'll ask why am I clubbing this together? Because I am always having this desired result in my mind. In my in 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 the desired result, you see only B and D are talked about. So hence I have to somehow get rid of this item. And again, to get rid of that item, we'll again use. So this is quite you know intuitive that. 360 degrees also there, A and C is also there. So can I not write like this as angle B plus angle D? This item is this. Why? Because A plus C plus, I'm writing here, A plus B plus C plus D was 360 degree by angle sum property of this triangle, uh, quadrilateral. So hence A plus B will be 360 degrees minus C minus D. I'm not putting the angle sign. You can understand from here. Okay. So what is it? So hence clearly this item is B plus D and minus again angle B plus angle D upon two. So take the LCM, you will get two and it is two times angle B plus angle D minus one time angle B plus angle D. And hence you get the desired result, which is angle B plus angle D by two. Okay, hence proudly, proudly write, hence prove. Okay, I hope you all understood how to solve such kind of problems. Now the question is, sir, can we consider B, D, no, here again. How can you consider B, Q, D, P as a quadrilateral? The question is, can we consider P, D, Q, B as a parallelogram? For parallelogram, guys, you must have P, B parallel to D, Q. And... Uh, Sorry, P, uh, so there is no information regarding whether they are parallel or not. This information is not there. So hence, guys, we can't do that. Okay. So don't assume things until unless there are enough information to prove what you are assuming. Okay. I think there is an easier method. Go ahead, Aditya. Please, please, uh, you know, uh, enlighten. No problem. There could be one geometry. Some can have multiple ways of solving it. You can, I, as I told you, you could have taken this approach that PDQB is a quadrilateral and P and Q being uh, two of the opposite angles. So you can start from there as well. Okay. So one sum can have multiple ways of solution. My, again, mind you, my intention to work out problems with you is not to find out solution only, but also to train you on how how you should approach a problem and what, how should you express yourself? Okay. Because this is just one, one such sum in every sum you have to be diligent about your expression. Okay. Now moving on. So this is, I think you can do the exercise and let's now again, uh, go further. Okay. Wherein now we are talking about this table. So hence this table could be useful for you. You can use this table. Okay. The table is, the properties, all the different types of properties or different uh, properties of different types of quadrilateral. And whenever you are trying to solve any sum, it's always an advisable thing to do is that you have an A4 sheet in front of you and keep the properties of parallelogram as we are expressing right now in front of you and then try to solve the problem. That is always, this is one, one thing you can do. Another thing what I will recommend is make a list of list of all theorems all theorems in one place one place so you can take an a4 sheet or a diary or a notebook wherever and you keep on writing theorem one theorem two theorem three only the theorems no not proofs keep writing all the theorems at one place okay and then what you can do is you can keep it in front of you whenever you are solving any geometry problem anytime okay so now let me give you this table and what i'm talking just give me a second guys Okay, now, uh, what I was talking about is, but our, what? Uh, some proof cannot be used. See, uh, uh, Aditya, here, what I am talking about is, see, forget about what's happening around. I'm just trying to say, this is the right approach of learning mathematics. So, you know, scores will follow. Don't worry, you know, uh, if you practice and you have, enough, uh, you know, knowledge and right approaches, you will definitely get the marks. So never mind. So what I'm trying to say is, please maintain a list of 
this and the table which I'm now giving, going to give you. So hence all of you can draw it as well. So hence I'm writing it as type, a type of quadrilateral. Then we'll talk about the sides. Then we'll talk about the angles. Then we'll talk about the diagonals. And then we'll talk about the area, all information at one place. Okay, so if you want, you can draw the table with me or you can, you know, your, your call. So this is what I'm going to do. So now, Okay, so never mind. Let me first start with a trapezium. So hence first information is about trapezium. Trapezium. Okay, what about the sides? Sides you can write one pair of opposite one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, only this. Angles, nothing such specific thing. Diagonals, nothing specific property. Area is given by half into sum of parallel sides into height. Height is, what is height? Height is this. So if you have to draw the tri diagram, so this is, let's say this is A, B and this height is H. So it will be half into A plus B times H. Clear? This is all information about trapezium. Now there is a specific special type of trapezium as well. And that is isosceles trapezium. So I'm writing it here again. So let's say isosceles, isosceles trapezium. What about this? So same as above plus non-parallel sides. Non-parallel sides are equal. Okay. Here base angles are equal. Or equal. Nothing specific about diagonals. Actually, diagonals are also equal. Diagonals are equal and area remains the same. So this is the information about isosceles trapezium. What is an isosceles trapezium? If you see, this is an isosceles trapezium where this side is equal to this side. Okay. This side is equal to this side. These are parallel lines and this angle will be equal to this angle. Isosceles trapezium. Now, next is parallelogram. Parallelogram. What about the sides? Opposite sides are parallel and equal. What about angles? Opposite angles are equal and adjacent angles are supplementary. Supplementary means some of them is 180 degrees. What about diagonals? Equal and bisecting each other. These all will have to prove one by one, but I'm just giving you the crux of the info, right? What is the question, sir? In trapezium, uh, adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees. Yes, there you can call it, uh, you know, what Shardul is trying to say is this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees. Yep, adjacent angles, but not all adjacent angles. Two pairs of adjacent angles are supplementary. Yes, you can say that. Equal and bisecting each other area is given by base into height. Base into height. Right? So what is that base into height thingy? So this is parallelogram. This is base and the distance between any two sides, any two parallel is H. So area will be into H. Okay? If you know this base and let's say this height, then that's also is okay. So let's say this is A and this is uh, P. So area is also equal to A into P, whichever way, both ways are okay. Okay, I will redraw so that you guys 
do not get confused okay so what is it i'm saying so this is a parallelogram let me draw a little yeah parallelogram let's say this side is a or rather b b this is a and let's say this height b h and let's say a distance between these two parallel sides b p okay so the area is area is equal to either b into h or a into p both are both. same okay so this is about parallelogram okay folks so i'll just quickly complete the table so that i can leave you for there you guys must be tired so just give me one two minutes and i'll complete this table then we have something called rhombus rhombus where again everything of parallelogram so everything stays the same this is same opposite sides are parallel and equal but side all sides are equal okay what about angles opposite angles are again same adjacent angles are supplementary opposite angles are uh, equal yeah this this remains as it is and this one they are not equal but bisecting each other at right angles at right angles okay and let's say this is the rhombus so so hence hence let's say this is my d1 and d2 apart from the above two formula the area formula let's say this is d1 and this is d2 so area is also given as area of a rhombus is half into d1 into d2 okay okay after this so diagonals bisect the angles where which one yeah all there are multiple features aniket there are many other things which will be there but right now we will focus on something which is basic comparable to all now so next is kite kite adjacent adjacent sides two pairs rather two pairs of adjacent sides are equal angles one pair one pair of opposite angles are equal and diagonals larger diagonal larger diagonal bisect the smaller one smaller one at right angles okay and area again is the same half into d1 into d2 half into d1 into d2 what is a kite guys so if you see this is a kite so little bit more i'll try to make it so again it takes a diamond shape but anyways what i'm trying to say is these two sides are longer yep again every time i do it takes a never mind ah, so let let us understand like this yeah so this is the longer diagonal this is the smaller diagonal so hence it is half into so this is d1 and this is d2 so half d1 into d2 is the area now this is right angle this side is equal to this side this side is equal to this side and this side gets bisected this one so the longer diagonal is bisecting the right okay so these are few of them are like you know all sir can you go up okay i'll definitely go up so i hope you know now so let me just you know yeah this is the table which i was talking about what you can what you guys can do is anyways you have the you know book right now with you so it will always be a good practice to you know tabulate everything and do one thing let's do one thing here all of you can draw your own send me a snapshot of your table with all the all the you know quadrilaterals and their properties written down neatly with some diagrams and all and the best one gets a reward from me 
is that fine so the best such one i will publish that in our forums and everywhere and then i'll you know uh, give the reward to the person who is going to send me a very good diagrammatic representation of all these information tabulated at one place and i'm going to give give you a good reward from my side so that's the thing so hence you jot down everything and next class when we'll meet we'll see how in the same diagram each property can be proved and then utilized for further mathematics i hope the thing is clear to you so there are a few queries for kite the opposite sides are parallel no kushagra it's not parallel okay uh, opposite sides are not parallel for kite okay is rhombus a kite yeah you can say it is a special case of a kite you can say so for that matter it's as good as saying is a square a kite is a you know a square could also be a kite so hence yes you can say so but then in a strictly um, theoretical or definition point of view since kite is a diagram where only two pairs of adjacent sides are equal so hence in that sense uh, you know school of thought says that rhombus is not a kite are diagonals equal in parallelogram that depends maybe may not be for example in a you know you can you can all such questions how do you handle what you can do is draw schematic diagram so let's say for example this is a parallelogram here right do you think the diagonals are equal in this case or you can you can you can go you know um this is just a you know one one case is good enough to prove that you know it's not uh, you know they are not equal so hence not necessary diagonals need not be equal in parallelogram anything else guys any other question yep any other questions so i i think i could uh, answer all okay very good by when you should send as quick as possible i will wait for two days and within two days if you send uh, i will keep on posting it in all the groups that this is what i have got till so far this is the best if i get better than that let other audience also decide which is the best one and uh, okay a decision will be mine i'll be giving you reward if you send me a good diagrammatic representation the way i have done it you can improvise upon it and you can come up with your own diagram and let me know uh, as quickly as you are done okay so hope the class was useful and we'll meet again so thanks for attending it goodbye and good night thank you thank you sir 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 thank you sir